Howdy, it's Mr. Pete again, and this is tips number 1031, and it's part two of a two-part video series on reassembly of the Southman 9-inch tool room lathe. And this is the final video here for a while regarding this machine. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have watched part one where I did about half of the assembly on this thing. And now I'm going to finish it off and make a few remarks. Well, I'm at the headstock end, and when I put the other gears on here in the last part, I forgot to put this two pound wide cast iron gear on this shaft, which connects the gear train with the gearbox and, of course, the lead screw. And there is a key here. Goes on like that, and this big old nut which I think is like one and one sixteenth. So when I'm trying to, uh, to tighten a nut like this with gears, I use a, a shim shingle. Now some of you might disagree with that, but we've got to have some way of, of holding it. See how nicely that works? And it can't really do any damage other than a little bit of sawdust. So that's good to go. Well, it's time to put the tailstock on, and I realized that this tray was in the way, so I had to take it back off. But now, the clean tailstock goes right on, hopefully. There it is. And then I will reattach this. And now the thread chasing dial, boy, did they build that thing heavy duty, will be mounted with a hex bolt to the apron. And by the way, this pin here goes into this hole. Okay, and now it is engaged to the lead screw. Can you see it turn? Maybe not, it's turning a little bit. But I like to back it off if I'm not threading and just put it in neutral, move it a little bit away from the lead screw and tighten it up. Never have this engaged unless you are threading. It would be unnecessary. Okay, now it's time to put the leather belt on. So by tradition, in order to fasten the lacing together there, we just use a short piece of cat gut. So this is cat gut, large diameter. Cat guts, small diameter, that's, that's from a kitten. This is from a full grown cat. But there's also other possibilities here. This is some kind of plastic. And this was very common, it's a, it's a steel type of, a, of a connector. So I'll get that looped up through here and see what I need to do here. Okay, the belt tensioning lever is in the relaxed position, so I have a little bit of slack here, not a whole lot. And I'm going to use the cat gut from the large cat. I'm sorry that a cat had to give up his life for this, but so be it. For all you cat lovers out there, I like cats, but I'm allergic to them. So see how that fit in there? And then I'll just nip it off. And it will qu quickly get little uh, grooves in it that will prevent it from sliding back out. I might have to trim it just a little more so it doesn't make a noise when it goes around. Now let's see if it actually works. Okay, a little belt tension. And remember, if the belt is stretched out or worn out or whatever, we can change the tension on the belt from underneath here. Not easy to do, but it can be done. And that's probably the directions that are on the door here. I'm not really sure of that. Let's see if it works. Drum roll if you have a snare drum at your disposal.
Now, if you want to put the gear train into neutral, because if you're not using feeds or threading, you don't really need all of the gears to operate. It causes wear and uh, a little bit of noise. So pull the sliding gear out into neutral position like that. Well, it's time to put the collet rack on. I realized that the shelf is in the way. I had to take it off again. So that just slides on the V-way. And there's one bolt, one square bolt. I like those square bolts. And it's good to go. Well, this round thing here is meant to hold the drawbar, and I was curious as to why it was on there cockeyed, and now I see why, because there is an interference here. And I really don't like the way that's setting. The tray is just too long at all. Time to load the collet rack. Well, we're a little short. Now, I, there's another possibility here with the drawbar of putting it in through this larger hole for storage. I don't know if I like that, but I want to make a big point right now of telling you with drawbars, if you drop these, it's a relatively thin wall. If it fell out of the rack here and hit the concrete floor and bent a little bit, you might as well throw this thing away. For 75 years, I was wondering what this recess is. And I just found out it's for the adapter, I presume. In order to knock the center out of the spindle, we use, as I told you before, a ramrod. Now, this one is too small. It's meant for a 9-inch lay. Look at how small that diameter is. But I had this one downstairs on my closing. In fact, I had two of them. And I had made this a few years ago. It's brass. Big piece of brass. But that can be used for knocking the center out. Got a lot of weight to it as well. You know, this thread protector is so mutilated, not that it hurts anything, but this hole is so elongated. But believe it or not, I had another one in the basement. I like this better with the fluted deal rather than the way this one is made. So that's the one I'm going to use. I might have to clean it a little bit. But I want to point out another thing here. This one just has one hole for the spanner. It's a little bit large too. But this is the spanner wrench that was included. And you can see that's not the right size. However, this one I had down in the basement. Matter of fact, it's marked South Bend. I love it. And it fits so much better, doesn't it? So that's the one I will use. I've never seen one of these marked Morse. And I'm always wondering things like, wh why would Bubba have elongated that hole and just mutilated it? Just what is the reason? We'll never know. In order to use a center in the headstock, I need a sleeve. Well, one was not included, or at least I couldn't find it. Maybe it's still at Lee's house, or maybe he never did have it. But I had a couple of these downstairs, but this one is... Too large, that, I don't know what that belongs on. And this one is too small. So I, got to, I have to come up with one. And the, this hole could be either be a number three or a number two. But probably since the tail stock on the machine takes a number two, that's what I would like to stick with, is a, a sleeve with a number two here. I know I can't get one of these at Walmart. Okay, let's put the six inch buck chuck on the spindle. Now I just blew this out. It was filthy, mainly sawdust, but you should always clean your thread with a spider. At least that's what we, what we were taught. All the way down, get all the chips out of the internal thread and make sure this is clean, maybe with a brass brush from time to time. And, as always, a singular drop of oil to avoid the stripe of shame on your left shoulder. And I'm sick of using this, which puts a pint of oil on I said I want a drop. More like it. 
Always put a board under your truck. Did I say that already? Wait till you're 81. Never turn the motor on to spin that on. You'll jam it on. Incredibly dangerous and abusive. But Bubba does it regularly. I just discovered something annoying when I started moving the carriage. Watch this right here. Bam! Interference. So I got to do something about that. Can you see the buck trademark right here? So that's a very high quality chuck. And the face of the chuck is a lot cleaner than the periphery, which needs a good cleaning up and the jaws need to come out. And remember, I have a, a spare set of jaws as well. I think I'll remove this little oil reservoir here for the CMD pressure lubricant because I like to just apply it directly with a tube. But in fact, I very seldom do that because I have ball bearing live centers. I can't figure out why the tailstock has no paint on it. It's almost as if someone stripped it down in preparation for painting and realized what a huge job it was and quit after doing just the tailstock. These older machines had very small graduated dials and I've been a harsh critic of small dials my whole life as a matter of fact. In fact, this one here for the cross slide is inch and a quarter in diameter, but look at how tiny this one is. It's only, uh, it's a little smaller than three quarter. Even Henry with his perfect eyesight would have trouble deciphering the graduations. They're so close together for all intents and purposes, they're touching one another. I very much need to get new felts for the carriage. One is missing and these are all bent up and the felt itself is harder than a carp. Well, the old girl looks pretty good, even in her work clothes. Don't you agree? But it, yeah, it does need a paint job. It just won't get it from me. However, it's going to receive a lot more cleanup here and I'll probably do that off camera, but there's a lot of detailing that needs to be done. And ultimately, I would like to take the, the apron apart here and clean that, as, and I very much would like to take this gearbox apart, or at least partially apart, so we can see how it works, because it's so different from the two tumbler type. Well, it's been a long journey and there's about six videos on this and I'm going to flash on the screen right now the uh, uh, playlist for this. Some of these are not available yet probably, but go ahead and check those out. And I feel very sentimental sitting next to this old green and yellow thing because it reminds me of being back in high school, running this thing when I was, what, 16 years old, maybe 17, I'm not sure. It was a very good machine then, and it's probably still pretty good. And I hope to do a follow-up video where I take a few cuts and show you how to operate the controls and how compare this gearbox with the regular two-tumbler type that you are probably more familiar with. So again, if you like it, tell me where you live and leave me a thumbs up and uh, a comment. So long for now. Here's a playlist for the South Bend 9-inch tool room lathe. Check out all these videos for your viewing pleasure. I thought maybe I'd do a quick walk around here with the handheld camera before I call it quits today. I think it looks great other than the horrid colors.